So I have pictures of cats oh. here. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought we could do a rapid fire, like you assign what chonk category it is. Yeah. Did you see this viral video on the internet? It categorized cats on the chonk chart, putting them anywhere from a fine boy to an oh load he coming. The chonk chart is a meme that existed since 2018. After a little bit of internet research on Know Your Meme, it looks like it was first posted in this Facebook group by an Emily Chang. There were tons of comments on that video with questions like, what about dogs? What kind of food should cats be eating? How to help your cat lose weight? And hi, we are the ones who created that video, and we're here to answer your questions with Dr. Wheaton in the cat room. So we're gonna rapid fire through these because he has like 10 minutes between appointments. <laughs> first question, what is the ideal form for a cat or dog? So for a cat, obviously it's the fine boy. Um, you know, you want to have that ideal body condition mm -hmm. and that's going to be associated with optimal health. So, um, that, that's really important. You need to have that nicely defined waist. There should be an abdominal tuck when you're looking down on them and their ribs should be easily felt. So those are the two like biggest, you know, sort of features of the body condition, um, that are really, really important. And that's just going to lead to better health. When they gain too much weight, they, they lose their abdominal tuck and it just comes straight back. Mm -hmm. When they get really, really big, then we start to get in the chunk mode, right? Where we've got like love handles there, bumps there, that sometimes people come in, I, I would like you to assess this bump on my dog or cat and it's actually just like fat pads in that, in that area. So yeah, um, yeah that's, that's an area to look for. Why does keeping in good form matter for dogs and cats? Well, let's go to the dogs first. So there's just a, an easy study to look at. There um, was a study done with Labradors by Purina, I think 30 plus years ago that looked at a interrelated group of Labradors that were kind of genetically related to each other. And it was this very monumental study where they had a group of dogs in that that were allowed to eat basically whatever they wanted to eat. And they obviously were extremely fat. Labradors love to eat. Yes. <laughs> uh, the other group was kept lean the entire time. And um, notably the two big, big, big things that came out of that is the fat group lived two years less. So we're talking like a pretty significant chunk of their lives that we're not gonna get if we keep them too big. Um, they also had a much faster problem associated with their osteoarthritis. So it was something like a difference between four or five years uh, earlier for them to uh, experience their problems with arthritis. And that, it's not like the fat caused the arthritis to be there, but the fat you know, increases the load on all the joints. If, it, if there is arthritis, we're gonna have a lot more struggles with that. Yeah. In the kitties, it's a little bit different because um, there's a there's an actual real consequence potentially to having your cat fat, and that is just like the, it is in the human realm. Um, if we are eating, you know, excessive calories all the time and being fat, um, it puts a lot of stress on our pancreas to be kind of working all the time and we can burn our pancreas out and that's kind of, you know, type two diabetes yeah. um, in people is just generally, we're just using too much of our pancreas all the time to digest food. It's more complicated than that in humans, but in cats, that's definitely a thing where our really, really fat cats can develop diabetes just related to the fact that they're, you know, obese and they burn their pancreas out. Yeah. The bright side to that is that a lot of those cats actually are fixable with diet, um, but they don't all have to be on insulin you know, per perpetually, but that's a big thing for kitties. And additionally, they have you know, increased problems associated with arthritis and all of these animals are gonna have a harder time pushing blood around their system. And so there's all kinds of you know, peripheral issues that can happen there. Speaking of diets, what's the best diet for a cat? We should really be feeding animals what they're built to eat. And so it's quite simple that we would not feed a cow a chicken burger for lunch. We would not feed birds that eat bird seed and things like that. We wouldn't, you know, feed them steak or something like that. Um, they, every species kind of has to stay in their lane and cats are really easy to have this conversation because every single cat on this planet is 100% strict carnivore. All they are built to eat is animal. That's it. So animal, we can break it down into categories that help you choose something from a pet store. Um, animals are high, an high water content, so 70 to 80% water, high protein from animal, zero carbohydrates, zero grain. So it's the exact opposite of what most people feed. Most people feed dry kibble, mm -hmm. and most of the dry kibble for cats is gonna be 3% water, um, 
very you know low to moderate protein, but mostly not from animal, um, tons of carbohydrates and tons of grain. And so we, we deal with a lot of different consequences there, but um, dry food is also very calorically dense. So if you're feeding a cat a dry food, they want to fill their stomach up when they eat and they're eating basically power bars that are going to just be excessive calories for them that they have a really hard time burning off because again most of the cats are indoors most of the time and most of them are relatively sedentary and so they you know do this kind of thing where they just don't burn off enough calories they're taking in too many and oftentimes they also eat when they're bored and so there's this whole host of problems so you really really need to feed a cat a moist diet ideally it's a grain-free diet we don't really want to piss off the intestinal tract of a cat by feeding grain. It can be very inflammatory for a kitty cat. They were never meant to eat grain to begin with. Um, so that grain is put in there as a kind of, you know, profit booster for the, the company that's feeding that. And they have to be profitable, but um, we also have a choice in what we feed our cats. So we really should be feeding them as they were built to eat with a canned or moist diet that is mostly animal and no grain ideally. For the dogs, it's, much more complicated than that, um, but um, we need to basically be trying again with the dog situation to um, feed a diet that has uh, good ingredients and um, also is uh, palatable to the dog so the dog is actually eating it. And I think the biggest thing, and this is again in other videos that we've done, it's all about the poop on the dog side. Mm. So your diet that you're feeding to your dog should give your dog totally normal stool every single day. If it's not doing that, then you should be changing the diet. What are some methods for losing weight for cats? Methods for losing weight for a cat um, is really methods for losing weight for everyone. You need to reduce your calories. You could theoretically burn more calories off by doing exercise. Um, it's really difficult to make your cat have a you know very large amount of exercise in an indoor situation, but you should encourage exercise, encourage play. Um, there's a really great website for this called the Indoor Cat Initiative. And now I think the Indoor Pet Initiative that's done by the Ohio State University. So that can be searched and we can potentially add a link to that. Yeah. Um, but uh, encouraging exercise is great, but it usually is not the thing that really makes weight loss happen. At the end of the day, it's really gonna be about reduced calories. And so that can be challenging sometimes because cats and dogs wanna eat what they wanna eat. And people a lot of times love their pet through food. And so oftentimes it's just really hard mentally for the owner to um, reduce the amount of calories. The pet may not like that as well. And especially with a cat, they're very, very, persistent to get what they want. If you were to reduce the amount of food that your dog is getting, they might look at you funny for a couple days, but they're gonna eat, willingly eat their food and they're not gonna really bellyache about it most of the time, no pun intended. <laughs> um, the kitties, they'll complain about it potentially for a month. Yeah. And most people don't have the resolve to like ignore that howling cat yeah. that's you know advocating for more food. And then you reward that behavior and you've just solidified the you know, behavior continuing because they know now that there's a reward coming if they do a particular thing. Yeah. So that can be really difficult, but reducing calories is the most important thing. There are some um, prescription diets that can be used that can kind of help with this. They're usually gonna be relatively low calorie diets with a lot of fiber in them so that the animal feels satiated when they eat. Um, they don't always work well because of palatability. So sometimes, you know, pets don't want to eat them and it's it, very simple to, you know, continue to keep feeding an excessive amount of calories with those diets. They are not magic. You still have to, you know, have yeah. a very maintained amount of food. So they can be helpful, uh, no doubt, but it's not necessarily the case that they're necessary for every single pet. It, it's just about reducing the calories. It's a simple equation. And if we look at it very simply, as a faucet, the more food you give an individual, the bigger they're gonna get, the less food that they get, the smaller they're gonna get. So yeah. it really is important for us because nobody out there is feeding themselves. Everybody is being fed by their caretaker. Yeah. And so we have to you know, kind of understand that we have a pretty big responsibility to doing the right thing for the pet. And the right thing for the pet is not doing what they demand. Yeah. It's, it's setting them up for success so that we keep their, their weight ideal. And then I have one more thing. Okay. 
So I have pictures of cats oh. here. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought we could do a rapid fire, like you look at it and you assign what chonk category it is. Yes. And I can remind you of them. It's yes. a, a fine boy, he chonk, a heckin' chonk, yep. a mega chonk, mm -hmm. and then oh lord, he coming. I think there's one more category in there though. There was. It was hefty chonk. Okay. Well, we're starting with the oh lord, he coming. Oh my gosh. And that then, cat is. Yeah, this one. Oh my gosh. I mean, that literally is scary, actually. I know. Um, I worry for him. <laughs> yeah, that is like the typical picture of a pre diabetic cat. Oh. Um, I mean, that cat, if it got diabetes, it would be so classic. Yeah. Um, I mean, that cat is just morbidly obese. It, it's cute enough in its like fatness, I, you know, to some extent, but like that is just really sad for that yeah. cat. Yeah. Very limited mobility. Okay, here's another one. Yeah, I'd probably mega chunk that. Um, oh, mega, you would say mega chunk for this? Yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't think a oh lord he come in right. on that one. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty chunky cat. <sighs> I mean, oh lord. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh lord he's coming. I mean, that is a big cat too. Yeah. I, and look how small the head is in comparison to the body. I do find that, like, through this, I feel like a lot of people thought their cats were in lighter categories than they actually are. Like, I think people have a really hard time assessing the fatness yeah. of their own cat. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's kind of tough sometimes, too. Yeah. Okay, backside. Oh, look at that fine boy. He's a fine boy. Yeah. Um, this one. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. Some of them are really I mean, funny. that looks like a Maine Coon to me or something along those lines. Maybe... Uh, Siberian with those ears, but um, that's a big cat stature wise. I, I would probably say that cat is maybe slightly above fine boy status, but I'd have to feel that cat because it's very fluffy. I, I, I'd probably guess that cat's fine boy. Okay, this kitty? <laughs> that's a heat chunk. Look at that. Maybe chunk. Megan chunk. Yeah, I, I feel yeah, like almost Megan a heck and chonker or something. Heck and, ch heck yeah. and chonker, yeah. He's got uh, it. It's definitely in that middle range of, um, you know, moderate obesity. Yeah, yeah. And then we have this one. Chonky. It's chonky for sure. Yeah. Mega? Heckin'? Mega? Wow. Heckin'? I See, mean, I don't not, know how to judge them. <laughs> that's a fat cat. Oh, poor bad cat. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us for another cat room chat. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Just stay true to the goal here and really just understand that you, you do have all of the control. It's all on you. And you really, really do need to kind of recognize your responsibility here and really try your hardest to stay true to this concept that it, it, it is possible to have weight loss with every single individual unless you have a dog that has hypothyroidism. You can make weight loss happen. Very importantly for the kitties, you have to do it slow and gradually. So having a scale at your house so that you can you know, weigh them, you really don't want them losing more than half a pound a month because that can cause a liver problem. So just you know, reduce the amount of calories, do it gradually and check your work. Because if you're not checking your work, you're just not gonna actually achieve what you're trying to achieve. Okay, bye guys. When we got something to say, we go to where the cats play. Come hang with us for a while. We promise to make you smile. Cat room.